What's up everybody? Welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this week's video, we're going to talk about a handful of the most commonly used array methods in JavaScript. So let's get into it. The first one we're going to talk about is known as array.map. So for instance, let's imagine that we have an array of numbers. Now I'm going to be using very simple and contrived examples, but I still believe that each one of these examples will still highlight exactly how these array methods are supposed to get used and how they can be useful. So if we have, let's say, an array of numbers, one, two, three, four, five. Now let's imagine we want to actually have an array that starts, that has all these numbers except doubled. So for instance, instead of one, we have two, instead of two, we have four, instead of three, we have six, and so on. So how can we easily loop through this array and then double each number and then get another array that has all these numbers doubled, right? So for that, we can use something called array.map. And so this is what this is what that'll look like. We'll say const doubled is equal to numbers.map. So that's the actual name of the method. So it, the map exists on the array object. So since numbers is of a type array, we can use the map method. Now map takes in a callback function, or in other words, it takes in a function as an argument. Now we're going to say that we're going to have an n argument. We're going to say an arrow function. And then what we're very simply going to do, n here represents each number in the array. So as we loop through it, it's kind of like a for each or like a simple for loop, a loop through each element within the array. And then that each element at that iteration gets represented with the n argument. So this n, where you can of course call it whatever you want. And all we're going to do is we're going to return n times 2. So simply double it. Then we're going to go ahead and say console.log doubled. And let's see what we get. So as you can see, we now have 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So again, very simple. This is actually a very straightforward um, method that exists on the array on the uh, JavaScript array um, object. All it is, you have, an array of, you have an array of anything. In this case, we're just doing an array of numbers. And then you loop through each individual, uh, uh, you loop through the array. You go through each individual item within the array. You do something to that item. And then the result of that, op of that operation that you're doing then gets passed into a new array. So for instance, in our case, basically we go through every number in the array. We double every single number. The result of that doubling, in other words, a doubled number, then it gets put in to the new array. And also, crucially, the original array numbers does not, in fact, get changed whatsoever. So if I was to now do console.log numbers, just like so, we'll see that nothing over here actually gets changed. This one will still say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but the new one is now 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So again, very simple. Loop through the array, do something to the array. The result of that something that you did gets put into the new array. The original array remains untouched. So that's dot .map. Now let's move on to dot .filter. So filter is basically an example of, let's say you have a whole bunch of items in your array, but you want to have a smaller subset of that array based on a certain condition. In other words, give me, so let's say, for example, you want to have only all the even numbers within an array, or only all the odd numbers of the array, or only all the numbers that are greater than a certain value. That's actually the example that we're going to do right over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say const result is equal to numbers.filter. And once again, we're going, to pat, we're going to accept an n. So it works exactly the same way as the map does, right? In terms of the fact that it accepts a function as an argument, this function will have n as the argument, n representing each individual number of the array. And then for every number in the array, we're basically going to check to see if it passes a certain condition. In our case, we're going to see if n is greater than 3, then I want you to pass it into my result array. So in other words, what's going to happen here is result will include everything that is greater than 3. I didn't say greater than or equal to 3, therefore 3 will not actually get included. But in this case, we're going to loop through every single item. So we're going to go through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. For each number, we're going to check to see if it passes this condition. In our, in our case, the condition is going to be, is n greater than 3? If it is, pass it to the new result array. Otherwise, just leave it as is. And so now if we actually go ahead and console.log the, result, the resulting array, we're going to go ahead and see that we do in fact have four, five, and six. We don't actually have three. And once again, crucially, the original array remains untouched. It's immutable. It doesn't actually mutate the original array. So if I now go ahead and console.log numbers, we're still going to see that we have all the numbers one through six, whereas in this not in the new array, we only have four, five, and six. So that's basically what filter does. A very, very useful um, JavaScript array method. I think one of the mo most useful ones, in fact. Okay, so let's move on to dot find. So dot find works quite similarly to the way dot filter does except that filter will always return an array. So for instance, even if here, if let's say only one item actually matches, right? So for instance, if I was to do like a greater than five, let's say, so now only one item would actually come into my array and we'd actually go ahead and say uh, six, right? We only get the number of six, it only, but it still actually returns that as an array. And furthermore, if let's say I was to actually go here and say, give me everything that's greater than six, which of course we don't actually have anything that's greater than six, we're still gonna get an array, albeit it'll be an empty array. But that's not how find works. The way find works is it basically will loop through each, each individual item of the array, check to see if that item matches a certain condition that you're passing into it. 
and the very first item that passes that condition is the one that gets returned. So you're only getting one individual item. Even if more than one item in your array matches that same condition, you're only going to get the, the first item that matches. If no items match, what you're actually going to get is going to be undefined. So let's see that in action. Let's say const number will be equal to numbers dot find. Once again, we're going to pass an n which represents the number for each individual element within the array. And then in this case, we're going to say if n is greater than 2. So in reality, we should be getting 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? Because they're all greater than 2. However, what we're going to see is we're actually only going to get the first one. So let's do console.log. We're going to go ahead and log number. And as you can see, we actually get the number 3. Even though technically we have more than just the number 3 that's greater than 2, technically 3, 4, 5, and 6. But because we're using find, find only returns the first item that actually matches your array. Or matches your condition, rather. So in this case, we could also do something that's actually more semantically correct. Because see, right now here we're saying, give me everything that's greater than 3, but we're only getting the one number. So therefore our condition, technically while it works, doesn't make a lot, a lot of sense. But so typically the way that you'd use number, the way that you use the find method is if you're actually trying to find one very specific item within your array, that kind of would make a little bit more sense. So in this case, we might say something, give me the n when n is equal to uh, the number four. So now we're actually going to get the exact number four, and this actually makes a lot more sense. And this can be very useful if let's say you have like an array of objects and you have, you know, each object has like a unique ID and you want to find the, you want to find the object that has this particular ID, you might do something like where object that ID is equal to the ID that you're comparing it against. So this is when you want to go through an, an entire array and you want to find something that matches a very, very specific condition and you want to find the one item that matches that condition. And just because I, just for the sake of like clarity to show all the different possibilities that you might get here, if let's say we did where it's equal to seven, where of course we don't actually have the number seven in our array, this will actually go ahead and return undefined, as you can see here. Okay, so we've seen map, we've seen filter, and we've seen find. Now let's move on to reduce. So for reduce, I actually have two examples. I have first a more simple example, then I have a slightly more complicated example, only because reduce is actually very powerful, and I think seeing two examples and one from the sort of opposite end of the spectrum, one kind of easy and one kind of more involved, I think really help you understand how reduce works and how powerful it can actually be. So let's get into it. Let's first look at the simple example that reduce has to offer. So let's imagine we have an, an array of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way through 9, and our goal is we want to kind of add up all the numbers 1 through 9. So let's see what that would look like using reduce. Let's go ahead and say const total is equal to numbers dot reduce. Now reduce is 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 the one is one of those functions that exists or one of those methods that exists on the array object in JavaScript that actually accepts two arguments. So so previously we saw map, filter, and find all accepted one argument, and that argument was just a single function. And then those functions can actually accept more than one argument. I didn't show that, but they actually can accept more than one argument. Reduce, though, it itself accepts two arguments. The first one is a function, and this function accepts two arguments, crucially. The ones that we need to work with anyways. One of them is going to be called ACC, and the other one is current. And then the second argument that it accepts is an initial value that we want to kind of start out to. In this case, we're starting out to zero. We're starting it out with zero. So, so the idea here is we basically, reduce is typically used when you want to kind of transform data from one data set or from one data type to another. In this example, we're trying to go from an array of numbers to a single number that has the value of all of those numbers sort of added up together. And so what we're doing, what we're basically doing is we're basically going to end up with an array of numbers to a single number. And that number will start at zero, and it's going to end up with whatever the value is of all these numbers sort of added up together. So this, so this ACC argument, this accumulator argument, as it's called, it gets passed in as the first argument to the function of reduce basically represents this zero. So right now on the first iteration, ACC in this case is just going to be equal to zero. And current represents each individual item within the array as you're looping through it. So on the first iteration, ACC will be zero because we specified it here with the, with the second argument of reduce. And current will represent the one because right now we're starting at the first iteration within our array. And so then what happens is we're basically going to say ACC is equal to uh, ACC plus current. And then we go ahead and we have to return ACC. So one of the rules that exists within reduce is that after every iteration, you have to return the ACC so that it becomes available with a new value for the subsequent uh, iteration. So right now, ACC starts at a zero. So we're basically saying ACC is equal to the zero plus one, which is just going to be one. Return the ACC, come back around. Now the accumulator is one and current is now two. So now we're going to basically say that the, that the accumulator will then become equal to the ACC plus current, which is basically going to be equal to one plus two, and then so on and so forth as we keep looping through the entire array, and then we end up with our total that basically aggregates all the numbers together to one final sum. And in this case, that final sum is going to be console.log total, and the number is going to be 
45. So now let's look at a slightly more involved example using reduce. Let's imagine we have an array of people like we have on screen right over here. And each person, each object is basically a person that has a first name and a last name. Now we're being, we're being asked to build an application that will allow a user to search based on last name. So a user will enter a given last name and then we have to go through our data set and find all the people and return all the people that have the matching last name based on what the user searched by. Now of course if we basically just use this as a simple array and the array can obviously get quite large like we can have a thousand or ten thousand people within our system that they can search by. This wouldn't necessarily be the most efficient application and from when the time the user actually enters the name till they actually get a data set or some kind of result may take a while and we would like to make this slightly more efficient. And so we come up with this idea that you know what we don't want to actually have the data stored as an array let's transform the data from an array to an object because objects obviously give us constant time lookups and so the thought process is we basically like to have an object where each key is a last name and at, the, at that particular key, the value would be an array of all the matching people that have that last name at that particular key. So for instance, we might make an object that has a key on it called Smith. And then at that particular key, the array would be, uh, it would be an array of all the people that have the last name of Smith. Then we might have like another key on that same object called Doe. And then at that key, we'll have another array where I have all the people that are stored at that array that have the last name of Doe. And so now our goal is to basically you actually transform this people array into that object that we've just specified. And so the method that would actually make a lot of sense to use here is once again going to be reduce. So let's actually see this in action. And now that we actually understand some of the more basic concepts of how reduce works, this will be a little bit easier to digest. So let's go ahead and say const transformed is equal to people.reduce acc and current. Now in this case, since we want to go from an array to an object, we're going to specify that the initial value of the ACC of the accumulator is at, in fact going to be an empty object. Now once again, the accumulator is going to be this empty object. Current is going to represent the current item that we're, that we're looping through. And now we're going to start actually transforming our data actually right in the actual code, the logic that's going to transform our data from the people array to the transformed object. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to basically check to see if in this object we already have a key of current.last. Do we already have this key? If we don't, we're going to come to the else. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to build it up. We're going to say ACC of current dot last is equal to an array that it will have the value of current. So in other words, if we don't yet already have in this particular object, the key with this particular last name, let's go ahead and add a key with this last name. And let's initialize the value at that key as an array where the first value in this array is going to be the current person that we've just looped through. Now, as we come back around in this point, we're going to say, okay, we do already have a person that has this particular key. If we do, then ACC of current.last is already an array. And if it's already an array, all we need to do is ACC of current.last.push current. Let's just push the new person into that particular key at that array at that key. And of course, as always, we must always make sure to return the ACC. Now let's come down over here, console.log, see what the transformed looks like, console.log transformed. And if we run this code, now we can actually see that we have a, an object that has into two keys. The first key is Doe, the second key is Smith, and then each key we have an array with all the people that have the given last name based on the key. And so once again, the way that this works is very simple. We're just using the reduce method, which basically takes in two arguments. The first argument is a function that actually does the work. The second argument is going to be the actual data set that we're trying to transform to, which in this case we're initializing to an empty object. So in the first iteration, this ACC represents that empty object. And then current will, of course, represent each item within the array. And as we go through our, our array, we're basically checking to see if this item, if this key already exists in this object. If it exists, then just go ahead and push it into the array. If it doesn't exist yet, like when we come to this else block, then basically create a new key with this particular last name being the key. And then the value at that key is going to be a new array with the first value being the current person that we've just looped through within the array. Well, that basically does it for reduce. And of course, that also does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next week in another video.